now taking a moment to align ourselves. <laughs> and now let's bow in. And oh my gosh, Mas. Mas. Let's start with some heaven and earth breathing. Let's dip down, draw from the earth, connect to the heavens, and radiate out to the world. Opening. Extending. And now let's look with our containment breath. Feeling the strength in the abdomen and then releasing. And now moving from our hotter point. And as we turn, enjoying the feeling of key flowing through our arms and fingertips, touching the walls or extending through the walls. Just that sense of radiating out and expanding, opening. Nice, and let's stop for a moment and just stand in that. See if you can sense the key flowing around you and through you. And now let's stretch our sides a little bit. And all the way around. And reversing. All right, let's stretch out our low backs a little bit, dropping into shoulder. Okay, let's work our hips now, circles with the hips. In both ways. In our knees. In both ways. Stretching the backs, and if you're comfortable, squatting the front. And again. Okay, let's do our hand warm ups, starting with Ikkyo. Let's settle down, lengthen up, strong hips, opening our hearts. Nice, other side. Taking the weight out of our bodies. What's it like to take the weight out of our bodies when we're under pressure? Nice, karagaish. And as we put the pressure on, softening, taking the weight out of our body. And the other side. Okay. 
and Nikio. And the other side. and inside the arms. Both sides. Okay, let's shake them out. And over our heads, see if we can really shake everything all the way to the toes. And then let them fall. And again, shake them up. All the way to the toes. And let them fall. In big circles with the arms. And the shoulders. And then let's rub our core a little bit using our elbows. Okay. Nice big triangle, finding a point you're extending through the wall, way out. And then imagine the backs, our backs are open. We can invite our key spirit to flow through us. And let's go together and back, together and back. As we do the movement, focusing the triangle shape, finding the point we're extending to way out. The smooth sides coming from the point extending behind us. And our backs are open and we invite our teachers, mentors, archetypes, inspiration to flow through us, through our arms, through our fingers, and out to the world. Should feel great to be a conduit for wisdom, compassion, courage. A couple more. Okay, and now let's just hold it and just stand for a moment. See if you can still sense the triangle. Sense there's energy behind you flowing through you and you're organizing the energy in a triangle. Okay, let's move to the circle. Let's do the two set. And one, two, one, two. As we turn, sensing the key flowing through our arms and fingertips, sensing the space around us, Filled with the life force, filled with key. A big circle connecting us to all things. The energy moves us with ease. Key flows. We can enjoy it. Connecting above, below, all around us. Putting our attention outside our skin into the space. Two more. Let's turn and stay for a moment. And just stand in it. See if you can sense the key flowing around you and through you, above you, below you. Nice. Let's do rowing. Let's do our sword blade. Let's charge it up. See, we get that sensation from the elbow all the way to the little finger. So we really have that feeling that sword blade is extending out. Ready? And then we're going to gather it back and extend it out, finding a point. So we're organizing, shaping the space of the key. 
extends out to a point and gathers back. Feeling the flow, taking the weight out of our bodies. Something bigger moves us. It could come from behind us, from underneath us, from above us. We organize it, sending it out, gathering it back. Two more. Okay. Let's reach up. Take some key from the heavens, bring it down, vibrating our hara. Concentrating into our hara until it gets smaller and smaller, and then it opens out into the universe. Vibrating the universe inside of us. Stop your movement, see if the vibration continues. Nice, let's do the other hamni. Again, taking the weight out of the body, extending out, gathering back. Sensing where that key comes from, below us, behind us, maybe above us. It flows through us and we gather it back. Organizing, shaping key. Two more. Okay. One more time, let's reach up. Take some key from the heavens, bring it down. Vibrating our hara. <clears throat> Concentrating into our hara point. The vibration gets smaller and smaller until it opens out into the universe. The universe is vibrating inside of us and beyond. And let's stop for a moment. See if you can still feel the vibration continuing. Okay. So nice to see everybody, Elizabeth and Kat. Haven't seen you for a while. Great to see both of you. <coughs> so the theme was based on the end of our session last week. Um, I can't remember how it came up, but it came up somehow. <laughs> And um, so this is called Three Levels of Practice. It's something I've said for a long time um, <clears throat> about how to practice. And a view that I hold is um, that there's three areas of practice that happen to us. And in the ideal world, uh, I would say about a third of time in each area would be healthy. So I'll get to describe the areas and then we can discuss for a minute. Um, the first one is um, I can do it. It's a feeling of uh, confidence, a feeling of inspiration. It's connected to sort of the zone of the flow state, feeling like we're capable and we can do it. We've developed something and there we are, we're going along and things are happening. <clears throat> uh, the second level is I'm at my training edge. Um, it's a struggle and there's frustration, but I, and I can feel that if I persevere, I'm growing. Um, in a wonderful book called The Talent Code, um, that author Daniel Coyle talks about the right amount of struggle. And he makes a case for uh, too much struggle and the system can't learn, too little struggle and the system won't learn. So there's the right amount of struggle. And that's the second level. And the third level, which often I think we don't appreciate the importance of it, is um, I can't do it yet. Um, the yet is important. Uh, 
when I'm in the world, not on the, on the Aikido mat, it's like, okay, I got my ass kicked by that partner and I bow to them. And um, I think I said last week, sometimes I make up my mind that a year from now or two years from now, if I'm with that same training partner, I'm going to be able to be, manage myself much more effectively and skillfully. But I realize it'll probably take a year or two. Um, <clears throat> and uh, in life, sometimes I do kind of an internal bow. Family members for me are often, I can't do it yet. I, I lose my center often with family members. Um, and then I, I kind of had this internal bow. It's like I just... I couldn't manage that skillfully. Um, and then it brings to mind a quote by Roque, which most of you know, um, the purpose of life is to be defeated by greater and greater things. The purpose of life is to be defeated by greater and greater things. And that's a famous Roque quote. Um, so, uh, my feeling is if we spend too much time at the first level, um, we'll get complacent and probably a bit egotistical. Yeah, I'm good, I can do it. If we spend too much time at the, at the second level, we could be stressed, which is not good for our system, kind of living in a state of stress. And too much time, of course, in the third level is depressing. You just, <laughs> we kind of might even lose our attraction to the practice, feel like we have, we're not good. So I'm gonna stop here and open it up a little bit before we do some exercises and get your thoughts on these three levels of practice or any um, experiences you might've had recognizing them in your own path or process, Aikido or otherwise. I can share that um, I had moved to Montreal and one of my uh, desires was to be fluent in French-ish, since it was Montreal, but uh, Quebec, Quebec version of French. Um, and I couldn't do it. I was there for a couple of years. And what I ran into that third, second and third maybe, and I just, I couldn't put it out there enough to get to a place like I wasn't willing to be stupid. And so I don't know if that plays into, or to, yeah, to not, to fail. I wasn't willing to fail. So I don't know where that lies in the, in the growing edge, but, or in that three levels, three stages. Um, well, it, it seems I think that it, you get caught in the third level. And yeah, instead just, of finding a way to recognize moments of the first two levels, like it's a percentage game. Yeah. How much time are we spending? It's all a percentage game. How much time do I spend in the third level and the second and the first? Um, and if we're way off, like it sounds like you got way off on that, you spent percentage wise way too much time in that. And then we can't, we can't go forward. Um, so, so that's what I have to ask myself. Like if I'm starting to get frustrated is okay. Like percentage wise, how much time am I spending of my waking awareness? In frustration. And I don't know about other people on the screen, but I don't spend tons of time going, yes, I'm great, I can do it. So <laughs> I actually know a couple of people who do that, but that wouldn't be me. So if there's not a worry that I'm going to get caught in the first level <laughs> and get stuck there, that's for sure. <laughs> I just wanted to add to that, that what you said was, um, it's, it's pretty it's profound to be able to be in that third level. But I think what you said was notice moments that you try to point, pick out the moments when you're in the first and second, right? Something yes. like that, right? So yes, that's exactly. still pay, pay paying more attention to that so that you can up your, your time spent connecting to those little wins or those little, like I'm struggling, but I feel like there's growth thing kind of thing. So often we don't pay it, and I, I don't think we pay enough attention to those. Some of us don't anyway, I don't. I'll, I'll pay more attention to the losing it moments. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I, I also have just born, raised, very self-critical, not good enough. However, I find that the training of giving it up to the space 
and not taking it on has really opened up my capacity to be not like I'm getting it, but like, it's okay. <laughs> you know, the way it's going, I can, I, I'm okay with it. I'm not fighting it. <clears throat> and so I, I'm just associating that with um, expanding my percentage on the, I'm making progress and it's all right. <laughs> because I, I am not so attached to doing it accomplishing it. Very nice. Well, any little skills or technique? It's nice you're sharing that, Michelle, because we should hear each other and then get ideas. And because I'm going to imagine most people on the screen tend to be on the self-critical side. Sensei, and I mentioned this last week, but a Andrew Uberman, the, the neural scientist, had yeah. talked about this a lot. And, and their research showed that you had to, one of the best ways of sort of increasing your ability to learn is to stay in frustration for at least seven minutes, for at least. And you just see it way too often. I just saw it, I see it with kids. I see it with adults where they're like, they try it one or two times and they're like, oh, I'm not very good at this. And then they didn't, they didn't stay in it. But also to view that period of seven minutes or go to 30 minutes, but view it as a positive thing. And then you're releasing more chemicals to your brain goes, okay, they're trying to work on things. But if you walk away from it in frustration and view it as a bad thing after like three or four minutes, it's diminishing returns. It won't be, it won't be good for your learning. It's really, it was really fascinating to hear that. Yeah. No, I, I think, you know, that's really true that uh, what he says in this book of the talent code on how we learn also good. Um, but more important, I think it's for us to just go, oh, look, I'm doing that again. I'm getting stuck in that third level. Like I'm putting all my attention there. And I have an alternative, like Michelle pointed out, I can give it up to the space or whatever it is. For me, it's inviting archetypes um, to support me. Just finding techniques to shift us out of that place where we begin to get myopic and just looking at the problematic aspect of our development, how we're trying to learn, grow, get better at, 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 a, at, a, at an activity. Mm -hmm. I, I'm remembering something else that really helped me um, after I had three consecutive significant deaths 26 years ago, I was definitely in, I can't do it. I am freaking out. And um, I went to Spirit Rock and it was an event where Ram Das was, you know, you could take, get in a line and talk to him for a few minutes. And when I told him briefly about my situation, he said, oh, you're in advanced training. <laughs> and it was, it was like, he got me, you know? If he told me that there was an advanced training, I quit complaining. <laughs> it's like, yeah, all right. It, it, was, it, was, it just completely shifted the game for me. And I'll never forget that, you know, when I get, I, I get really like, rah, and then I think, oh gosh, here I go, advanced training again. You know, like, I, I can't do it yet, but I am on the path. Yeah. Nice. Any other thoughts before we do some practice? I just shifted uh, jobs. I, I worked as a, a chaplain for nine years in a retirement community, and I didn't realize just how much my work was embedded in how much I love the people and kind of a mutual love for each other which we usually don't talk about because you need to keep healthy boundaries and all that kind of stuff. <laughs> but it was true, I really love the people. So now I'm in a new retirement community and suddenly I don't know what I'm doing as a chaplain. It's like, oh my God, what did I used to do? How do I do it? And so the, the not yet is really helpful in terms of let the relationships develop, let it develop, let it develop, let it develop, not yet, not yet, not yet. But it will come, right? I'm, I'm trusting it will come, but I'm, I'm really living in the the not yet, the relationship is not there yet. Thank you, Elizabeth, for sharing that. Because it is, you know, we 
you were kind of at level one for a while, like it was something that was natural and flowing to you and you had those relationships and now you're kind of popped into level, well, I think you're more in level two than three. I mean, I think you're probably in, you recognize that you're in a bit of a challenge, struggle there. Um, I'm sure there, there are probably a few clients, it's not yet, but <laughs> there are probably some that, that, that's starting to develop. Yeah. So we want to be careful we don't just go right to the, it's all level three. That level two, you know, happens every time we do a small task and we struggle with it. And then the next time we do it, we're a little bit better at it. Cat, you need to unmute yourself, Cat. We can't hear you. I am. I didn't did not get what you were actually naming the second part. I got that. I can do it. I can't do it. But what is the middle part there? The middle part is I'm at my training edge. You know, we oh, say I'm at my keto. The tra it's the training edge. It's a struggle. We're struggling, but and we're we're growing slowly. You know, we're we're trying something, whether it's you're learning a weapons sequence or something, and you get it, and then you lose it, and then you get it again. And you feel like little by little, your the sequence is starting to come into place. So, 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 so that's the training edge. And then there's the place where you 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 know the sequence, and it's just a question of refining it. You're in flow, but there's the learning the sequence. And then there's before you even start learning the sequence. If you're doing like a you know weapon sequence, you're just like I can't do this yet. I have no idea. You know, I learned, I started with Iwama, like many, many of us. And then when I switched over to ASU, I was like, what? <laughs> What's going on here? I felt like I, I couldn't do it, um, even though I was probably a Nidon or Sandan or something. I had to sort of um, start from scratch and learn how to do it differently. Um, does that make sense, Kat? So the middle one is that you have a sense of your... Um, you're learning something, it's not easy, but you can sense there's growth. Well, you know, when you're talking about it, it I, I get stressed thinking about that, thinking that way about it. it it's like, it, I'm a Capricorn, I wanna achieve something. It's like, for me, achievement's important. So, but it's like, here Audrey Hepburn says like, uh, she, what did she say? The most important thing is to enjoy your life, to be happy, it's all that matters. You know, and, and we're so, we ex expect a lot of, our, of ourselves. We want to go farther. I mean, I, that sounds really good when you think about it, just like, just be happy. But we need something to do also at the same time. And, and we're very fortunate to have Aikido and have all the things yeah. we could do there. Yes. So anyway, it's, it's not as, it's, when you talk about it, it sounds very stressful, but I think maybe it's just because I've spent a while doing it, but it's not actually that stressful when it's happening, I don't think. Do you think well, so? My, my, my suggestion is that there should be a place where it's not that stressful. There should be a place where it's a little bit stressful. And then there should be a place where we can't do it yet. So we begin the beginning of learning. Mm -hmm. My suggestion is we need all three. If it's just easy all the time, then we just get complacent and egotistical. We think we're great. And so I think there has to be a mix. So well, I was just going to say something else, man. Yeah. I was just going to say that, that learning something, I guess, I don't know, I guess you should be good at it or you feel, you feel like you've got something going there. That's really important to self-esteem and everything to have that in, in your life. So I, it's, it's, it's worth, it's worth working for too. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. And it's the, the working for it part that, is the middle part. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Um, so I thought we could. Um, the only way I know how to challenge ourselves a little bit because we don't have anyone to do that is to work with our bokken. So here's my suggestion: that we get the bokken and do some movement that you feel proficient at enough that you can enjoy the flow. So if it's just a showman strike, or if it's the Yokoman strike or this, just something where you feel you can do it and there's kind of a flow. 
and it feels like it's connected. And let's do that for a couple of minutes with our bouquet and just see what that's like to feel proficient. Just notice how your mind focuses. Notice your sense of your body, the movement, the expression on your face. Another 10 seconds okay and then just stop for a moment and then just stand in that holding your bouquet and just having a sense that you connected to some feeling of flow or some feeling of something that you felt you were good at just notice the way you kind of sense yourself in the space and with your body and your view. Okay, we're gonna contrast it. I want you to do a movement now that's a challenge, but that is possible. So for me, it's this one I've never been really good at. It's um, if you could do the get down ha so, and then there's a strike up and you turn it over and strike down. And then I come around and I do the other side. I strike down, I turn it over. This is for me, you don't have to do that. And I strike up. And it's, um, it's a kata that um, Jamal was a teacher, I forgot his name. Um, and it is a way when we're cutting targets, how you cut up through the target instead of down through the target and trying to get that sense of a clear line now. You don't have to do my, my exercise, but I want you to do an exercise that you kind of can do, but you're not great at. So something with a bouquin that is a little bit of an edge that you, you'd like to be more proficient, you'd like to be more flowing with it. So find something with a bouquin. You're welcome to use this one if you want, something else. And just notice the way you start to feel in your mind, sensations in your body. Moments where you may have a win. And moment, a moment where it that feels really awkward. Wasn't so great. So how do you work with yourself when you're trying to do something and get better at it? Another 20 seconds. Okay, let's stop for a minute. You just hold your bouquet to the side if you want because we're gonna carry on a little bit with the bouquet in a moment. So I'm curious, about your experience between, we just worked with the first and the second level. The one where we felt good at it and the one where we were struggling to learn more. Any insights on the difference between those two, which you noticed about yourself? Well, Sensei, when I'm I'm doing, uh, it's a new kata that Joel's been teaching and it, it has this, that slashing move that you're talking about and a bunch of others. And so, and none of the moves are what I'm used to, except for maybe the final showman strike. And it took me a while to learn it. And, um, and I get up tight, but I'm also very focused. Um, 
so I, I go between uptight and focus depending on um, judgment, like, oh, I didn't get that quite right. And these are all really rapid fire things. And when I'm just doing a practice that I know and I'm comfortable with, then I can invite in the lightness and the strength and, you know, and everything feels really good. It's really hard to bring in the lightness and the flow when you're uptight trying to learn something. I just, it's really hard. It, it's actually stressful. It's easier for me to concentrate on the technique and not worry about the weightlessness and the flow in the moment because it's all kind of overwhelming for me to try to pull all that together in one go. Yep. It sounds kind of like level two. <laughs> Anyone else have an insight, the difference between the two, level one and level two movements? Kimberly? Oh, sorry, I thought you were coming up. No, to... I was moving. I'm sorry. Yes, I, Sensei, I was, I was moving toward the screen to write something. But yeah, I had a similar experience um, uh, to Ula's. Um, generally kind of tight, you know, focused. And I also added a a nice little commentator. Yes, that was decent. No, that was terrible. Ooh, my shoulder hurts. You know, so there's a lot of commentary, whereas the first one I didn't, I was more aligned. I didn't have a lot of little um, voices, let's say. And Sensei, for me, uh, the first one, I was thinking about other things sort of day at work and I kind of stopped while doing it, right? So it was like, no, come back to, to this practice. And then the second one, my concentration went way up because it's a practice that I, I know, but I'm not very good at yet. One of the things I'm gonna recommend because I've taught myself to do this, not always, but I'm making progress is when I was struggling with it, when I would get a moment that was not too bad, I would say to myself, good. Like, I, you know, well, you've, you've heard me teach on the mat and I do that, right? Like if I'm, if I'm going with tr training with someone, especially if they're new and they, they catch it, like even a part of it, I'm like, good, that was it. It's, it's like trying to help them lock in a positive or uh, um, in the middle of their struggle. And I, I also try to do that with myself. Like, as I said, I can't always do it, but I've made more progress. It's like, oh, good, that was, that was a little bit of it. And not to be so heavy handed. And I found that any of us who teach in Aikido, it's really important when somebody does something well, if you're standing with them or working with them to acknowledge that. Mm -hmm. It's very un-Japanese just so you know. <laughs> Japanese, they only criticize you if they care, and if they don't care, they ignore you. But um, <laughs> Westerners need that. Um, I think as Westerners, we need that support, because, yeah. <laughs> Sensei, um, that's, that's wonderful that you made that, because um, when I teach children, which I haven't in a while, I will always find something positive about the, what they've done. Oh, that was some really nice flow, or you were really paying attention and I could see you were um, you know, following the instructions so carefully. And um, I was doing that with myself just now. <laughs> so, I don't think, you know, I would have noticed that I have actually learned how to do that for me as well as for the kids. <laughs> And it does help. Yeah. It because does. also um, for me, it's like I'm acknowledging the building blocks in myself. It's like uh, I'm acknowledging that this training is a continuum and that I have, um, I have things that I can rely on. Absolutely. Well, from a neuroscience point of view, according to this book, again, um, Talent Code, when you do that, there, so in order to make, make the impulse move more fluidly along the nerves, because that's what you're trying to do. You're trying to get the nervous system to hook up movements together, right? 
And in order to do that, a thing called myelin, which goes around the nerve sheath, it wraps. And when you give yourself a positive and a win, myelin wraps. And that myelin, when it's thick enough, the impulse moves much more quickly and fluidly um, along the nerve so that the movement can happen in flow. Because that's what you're trying to get it to do. Um, but there's actually a neuroscience thing about Mm -hmm. When you do what Michelle and I are talking about, you have a win and you acknowledge it, it wraps the myelin around the nerve. And, and then that, that starts to help solidify the capacity for the movement to, to happen easily. So and there's- yeah, yeah, and, and the myelinization is also protection. Yeah. Right, okay. it's like a buffer from the um, insults. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Exactly. Hmm. Anyone else? And do you have any insights? So Elizabeth, you have something you're gonna share with us? Well, I, I, was, I was surprised how much I strategize around that. Like, you know, I start doing something, I'm like, oh my God, I really don't know how to do this. Good thing nobody can see me. And then I may be able to do it this way. You know, actually I can do it this way. So I can take it and I can do it this way. And then I'll look at a YouTube later to see how I really need to do it. And with that, I caught myself down enough to keep doing what I was doing. So, so I think that that's an interesting strategy. I would encourage you to try a little more of the um, supporting yourself that we've been talking about to get a little more, you know, to increase the capacity to learn a little faster because if that myelin wraps, like if you go, yes, that was one and you don't go to the watch YouTube later bit, you just go, yes, then your system actually does something internally mm -hmm. to start to connect the movement more, more readily. So I think we can slow ourselves down from learning if we get too, if we interrupt that too much. That would be my assessment anyway. So to fake it till you make it is not a good strategy. Well, you, you've seen when you were studying Aikido, I, I'm, I'm gonna just because um, probably saw me coaching her. When she was studying for a test, she's got really good movement, really good sense of flow, timing, all of that. But when she would make a little mistake, she'd drop her head and shake her head. Do you remember that? She still does. Okay. So yeah. what that does is that impedes the myelin. It, it doesn't allow it to, to wrap. And that's why I would invite her to you know, look up and out and find an alternative to that habit that she has, because that habit will impede learning. Like I believe you, the habit you're talking about will not support a, a quicker learning style. So if we can recognize that and then find alternatives, that, that in itself is a whole practice on, you know, learning how to learn, how do we learn? Because beating ourselves up or constantly talking to ourselves while we're trying to do something doesn't necessarily promote flow. You know, when we're in flow, mostly when we haven't got a huge dialogue going about whether we're good or bad. <laughs> I'm thinking of the weight. You know, we're talking about taking the weight out, the burden. Mm -hmm of the criticism, it gets heavy, heavy, heavy. Exactly. Lightening up, take the weight out of the body and lighten up a little bit. And then maybe my mind can follow that. So Elizabeth, I, I, I don't know if you've been around but, um, for it, but there was an instruction by Koichi Shohei, of sensei's top student. And one of the things that he instructed was take your weight out of your body. So it's been really an interesting practice to do. Um, I've just been playing around with it. That's kind of what Michelle is referring to because it lightens me up and the heaviness that I have that's connected to self, my self-critic, it's kind of a weight. So when I take the weight out of my body, I feel lighter. Okay, so let's now go to doing something we can't do much at all. <laughs> So find one of those and you can make it up for yourself. What I'm gonna to try to do 
is I'm going to try to do this caisson movement on one foot <laughs> to see if I can do a series of three things standing on one foot, which clearly I cannot do. And I'm just going to, we're going to do that not for too long because we don't want to get ourselves hooked into a thing, but just what's it like to do something that we can't do yet? And what happens to our body and our mind? And just noticing what happens when we go there. So just play with it for a little bit. Ten seconds. Okay, <laughs> let's come back in and just check in and see what it was like to um, do a movement that we were not at all good at yet. Anybody want to share what happened to your? Your mind, or like your internal dialogue, as Elizabeth was reporting last time, or your general awareness of your system. Well, Sensei, it seemed like there was a little more. Okay, that felt a little better. Okay, well, that that I was off balance on that one. Okay, then that one felt better. So there was a back and forth dialogue that was pretty good um and i i think that you know when you're when you're pushing the the training and understanding there's so much focus on getting the technique right that it it it, it can't it, i can't help it not feeling tight even though the dialogue might be okay there's still a certain amount of tightness you know and and i hear that from other people that i train with cuz they you know, they can see it cuz i'm still learning so much so i know it's there but there's you know i just have to work through it that's so how do, i do you have any strategies like i'll do it and then i'll just kind of go take a breath and yeah. do that and then i'll try it again and then i'll so my strategy is not to stay tight I get tight, but not to stay tight, but to like do it again. And what goes through my head is, I wonder how long it would take me <laughs> to be able to do this. <laughs> I wonder if I, if I practice every, for five minutes every day, after a month, would I be able to do it? Like following on Elizabeth, that's kind of my strategy. It's like, how, how long? Do I have to practice before improvement occurs? I think I I try to when when you say you back up and get a breath. I think I I try to back up, and my thought is, okay, I'm just playing with this. I'm just gonna keep. I'm gonna think of it as as play, like beginner's mind, and that helps me dump a lot of the expectation and judgment because I've just forgiven myself. Oh, beginner's mind. This is okay. Ooh. I love but, it. Yeah. And that's what I try to do. But, you know, sometimes you just, you get to the point where you think, I should know this. I've done this so many times. Why, why am I not just doing this right? <laughs> of, so. of course, we're going to do that. But I love what you said, you know, trying to think of it as play and beginner's mind. Like that's a really good self-talk or dialogue that you can use with yourself. Yeah. Thank you for sharing it. I'm going to try to take that one on, play with it. Well, it works with the with the art, and I've brought it into the tax world when they hide some of the new 
input areas somewhere in the program and you have to find it. And I used to get really uptight and then I realized, well, you just have to put your time into it and it's a kind of a game, you know, find, find the hidden input place. And with art, it's kind of the same way. You try something and it, and it doesn't work and you go, hmm, okay, well, let's scrub it out and let's play with something else. And sometimes it just doesn't happen in that moment. Sometimes you, you have to step away and go for a little walk in the garden and you come back and then you see it. I mean, sometimes even just the play in the moment isn't enough for me. Sometimes I actually come home and then I think through like an Aikido, I think through the technique and I go, oh, why didn't I just try it this way? But you, sometimes you don't get it in the moment. It just pops up mm -hmm. later in your meditation or when you're brushing your teeth. That's the last bit. <laughs> That's a very classic way to get insights. People will get in the shower, in the bath, brushing their teeth, going for a walk. After the fact, that's when we often get insights. Thanks, Ella. Yeah. <laughs> Anyone else? Did you have any, what was it like to be in an activity that you were not good at at all? Sensei, it was hard for me to come up with an activity on my own that I'm not good at at all. And in, in, in contrast to if somebody would say, Greg, follow this footwork right like that that to me is like like incredibly much more challenging for my um for me to follow and i can follow lots of different things and i can watch something and follow it but following like footwork has always been uh, a, a much more difficult struggle and you can play around with some of these strategies that we're talking about as mm -hmm. you know ways to address the challenge Anyone else have a strategy? For me, the um, invoking um, an enlightened teacher or mentor is what helps me most in this one. One of my favorite quotes is um, the Dalai Lama saying that all of humanity needs our aspirations. And um, just kind of being in that aspirational energy nice. of maybe not even in this lifetime, <laughs> but I'm in this stream of aspiration. Yeah. That's a good one. I mean, I just remind myself not yet. And like you say, from a Buddhist point of view, it might not be this lifetime, but, and um, keep plugging away. Okay. Um, let's do, so hopefully this has been somewhat um, interesting and my hope is that you'll be more mindful of your percentages, like how much time you're spending um, in level one, two, or three. And, you know, I think a good healthy approach to learning would be about a third of each, you know, being in flow and then struggle. And then there's just gonna be times we're not there yet. That's kind of our benchmark where we're going to. Six months from now, a year from now, two years from now, you know, in Aikido, you start in four or five years before you're going to get your foot in the door. Um, make it to the bottom of the mountain, as they say. Trungpa Rinpoche, my meditation teacher, used to say, just sit down and do the shamatha, which is just the breath for about 10 years, then come back and we'll do, the, we'll start to work on it. <laughs> so just that sense that we keep plugging away and that it's not an insta situation. Um, hopefully... And, and I, I would like to continue with this. So uh, any thoughts you have, um, we'll keep looking at it and keep looking at um, unpacking it. Meanwhile, we have a couple minutes left and I'd like to do our um, declarations so that we can really put what we want to achieve out into the world. We can energize ourselves with our aspiration. So taking our bow can and taking it out, taking the weight out of our body, lightening up a little bit, Holding the bouquet lightly and extending way out into the world, inviting teachers, mentors to support us, the key around us to support us, and let's say our intentions out loud, and we'll send them out into the world. Ready, Anne. I wish to bring more positive intention into the world. Send it out. 
I wish to bring more joyful perseverance to the world. Send it out. I wish to bring more joyful perseverance to the world. Cut. Cut again. And a kiai. Hey! All right. Let's get a little brighter, a little lighter, a little. Invite a little more to come through us. Ready, and I wish to bring more joyful perseverance to the world. Send it out. I wish to bring more joyful perseverance to the world. Send it out. I wish to bring more joyful perseverance to the world. Cut. Again. And a ki. Hey! Last one. Letting ourselves be a little more porous, bringing a little more through us, connecting to the world, ready and. I wish to bring more joyful perseverance to the world. Send it out. I wish to bring more joyful perseverance to the world. Send it out. I wish to bring more joyful perseverance to the world. Cut. Again. And ki. Hi. And then just stand in it for a moment. See if you can feel your whole being vibrating with your intention. Connected to inspiration, sending it out to the world. Nice. Let's put our book hands to the side. Bow them out. Okay, let's end with a little heaven and earth breathing. So just taking a moment. And now let's dip down, draw from the earth, reaching up to the heavens and radiating out into the world. Earth and heaven flowing out. Two more. And now let's stand it for a moment and just send some positive energy, some light, key, shiny energy out into the world. A moment of appreciation for our friends and training partners for our community all over the world and our dojo. Moment of appreciation for our teachers and mentors, for O Sensei's vision, and for our own hearts. Let's bow out. So thank you all very much for joining. Um, thank you for sharing your ideas. And I'm curious if we can go a little bit deeper. Um, I'm just going to say one thing. You know, I'm a fan of Bruce Lee. You've heard me quote him a lot. And one of the things that he talked about, because he was a practice junkie, he practiced all the time. He'd be reading books on philosophy, and he'd have those TENS machines on, working his muscles while he was reading. <laughs> and he said, it's really important every, I don't know if it was a couple of months or a month or something I has completely rest. Just take some time and don't do anything. Just rest, let your whole system. He talked about the importance of how it can help you integrate and how it can help you renew. And so I'm just gonna put that out that um, sometimes I think, you know, life is stressful. We're trying to get everything done. We have a lot on our plate. And I think every now and then it's great just to take some time and just, and I don't think we're very good at resting. I'm going to put that out. I'm, I'm not. Um, 
and and I think it would be good for me to improve my capacity to just I'm I'm not talking about sleep, that's a different kettle of fish. I'm talking about just resting. However, we do it, having a cup of tea, sitting in a chair or a couch, or sitting in nature. However, we do it. So it's nice to see you all. Um, if you have any thoughts, feel free to either email me or um, we'll continue with this next week to see if we can get a little deeper into um, those different levels of practice and how we can be more skillful in continuing to learn and grow. Thank you for hosting, Greg. Thank you, Thank you all. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Good night, everyone. Good night. Good See night. you later. Bye. Bye.